Hey everyone, in this video we're going to explore how we let a virtual machine running in Azure find out information about the Azure Resource Manager environment of its own entity, i.e. the Azure Instance Metadata Service. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated. And make sure you hit that bell icon to find out about new videos and when I go live with various live events. If I think about a typical virtual machine, I have some VM. Now, that VM doesn't really know anything about the surrounding area. And by the VM, what I really mean is there's some kind of guest OS running inside that virtual machine. Now, it's generally enlightened. It knows it's not running on physical hardware. There are virtual drivers, there are Azure agents, but it really just knows about its own little world, what's running inside that virtual set of hardware. But there's this much bigger set of Azure surrounding it, which really doesn't know anything about. It doesn't know, for example, its Azure virtual machine resource name, or its resource group, or maybe it's the region it's provisioned in. Maybe there's tags that would be useful for it to know about. There might be custom kind of user data. Additionally, there may be scheduled events. I can think maybe about maintenance that's going to be happening. It could be, hey, it's part of a virtual machine scale set, and it's going to be deprovisioned. There's a scale in motion going on, but I've configured that grace period, so maybe I want to do some kind of cleanup inside. This guest OS knows nothing. It's got no way of knowing all of those things. That's all Azure Resource Manager. Well, the Azure Instance Metadata Service fixes all of that. With the IMDS, from within the guest OS, I can make a RESTful call. So this is just a standard HTTP call, standard verbs. Hey, I'm going to do a GET request. And the way this really manifests itself is there's this nice little 169.254.169.254. It's always the same. And then there are various metadata URLs I can use to find out information. But what I'm going to do is from that guest OS, I just make a RESTful call to that endpoint. And through those various URLs I pass, I get different types of data back, maybe about the compute, maybe about the network, maybe about scheduled events, maybe just all of it, I get it in general. Now, I'm going to basically just walk through some demos of this. A key point, though, this VM must be talking directly to that 169.254.169.254. I cannot be configured to use a proxy. Remember, a proxy is, hey, I'm going to go through something else for my HTTP request. It's not going to work because then that would be calling 169.254 and it would get its information. So I cannot use a proxy. I also, there is no authentication required. It's just acting as itself. So I don't have to worry about getting tokens or anything like that. It's just going to work as is. So let's just see this in action. I think it's uh, pretty easy to understand. I'm going to show a few little nice tips as well about how I can use this user data to get some custom information. You can imagine a scenario, maybe I'm deploying a whole bunch of VMs, but maybe there is something special about some of them. I want them to know maybe a certain role I want them to go and provision. Well, I can give it instructions through some of this metadata without having to go and do network communications actually into that guest operating system. So what I have is, let's just jump over, very basic little virtual machine. I have a demo VM, and we can see that VM is in a certain resource group, for example. So I can see it's in a certain resource group over here. I can see it's in a certain location over here. I have certain tags that you can see. It's a certain size, so there's information about it. 
Now, if we actually jump into, this is that virtual machine. Now, obviously, it has its own name, but really knows nothing about the Azure Resource Manager. Well, we can solve that. So what I'm actually going to do here is we can see I'm using initially the invoke web request. Now, I'm not going to stick with that. And I'm going to show you why. But the key point here is this. I'm just talking to 169.254.169.254. And I'm talking to the metadata endpoint. And I'm just getting instance information. And I pass an API version. I'm using the latest because as we'll see later on, I want to get user data. So what I can do here is I can just run this command and I'm saving the output to a variable, this response raw. So if I just execute that, you can see it completed. And then from here, I could just go and look at that content. And this is the response I got. So we can see quite easily, okay, so there I got a status code of 200, for example, and then there's a bunch of content. There's this content formatted back. There's some other information. There's the raw content. I can see all of the information. And I could absolutely do things with that. I could look, for example, just at the content. And there it is. We can see it's JSON, but it's not formatted very nicely. I can do some little cheats. I can convert it from JSON and then back to JSON. And that will actually fix all of the formatting. So if I run that, OK, well, this is a lot more interesting. So if we look at some of the information about this, there's a whole bunch. It's returning everything around compute and network. So I can see, well, hey, I can see my Azure environment, for example. I can see on the Azure public cloud. I can see information about, hey, my license type, my location is South Central US, my name is Demo VM. I can see my OS profile, my OS type. If I scroll down, I could see fault domains. I could see update domains. I could see things like my resource group name, my resource ID. I get all of this information. I can see the SKU that I was built off of, the storage profile, what disks I have, my OS disk, the sizes, the managed disk I'm using, my subscription. I can see the tags, that cost center, creator, both as just kind of a string and broken down into an array of objects with tags list. I see user data. We're going to come back to that version. I can see if I'm in a VM scale set. I can see the VM size zone. And then I get my network interface information. But you saw we had kind of that raw format. So rather than using invoke web request, what we actually like to use is invoke rest method. This will actually pre kind of format it into a native PowerShell object. I'm doing exactly the same endpoint. I'm just using invoke rest method instead of invoke rest request. So now if I look at my dollar response, let me just type that in. It's an object. I can look at, for example, OK, response dot compute. And I can look at the compute part. So now it's a lot easier for me to actually go and interact with. And if I want it as JSON, I can still do that. I could absolutely just Hey, do a convert to JSON, and now I have a dollar response JSON. The, I get that same format. But the nice thing about invoke rest method, it does a number of things. But a big one is it takes that raw format that responds to me and converts it into a native PowerShell object. So it's a lot easier to interact with. Now, as we saw, that kind of gave me back everything. If we look again at that dollar response, there's kind of that compute area I have here. So I can do that dot compute and I can do the dot network. So I have those two key areas. Now it may be I only want the network information or I just want the compute. So when I make that call in this second example, notice I'm doing slash compute at the end. So what this will return is only the compute information. It will not return the network information. So here, if we look at what it returns, it's just that compute structure. I'm not getting the network information. But again, now as that VM, I know all this information about myself. Now, maybe I just want to know the tags. 
So notice here, I'm actually adding in slash compute slash tags list. So just give me that particular part. So if I execute that, well, that now returns this nice little hash table for me of the tags that I could go and enumerate through, use in really whatever way I want. So this is really phenomenally powerful. If I just look at a few of the values from that initial response, hey, I can quickly just write out, hey, my VM name is demo VM, hey, my resource group is rg-demo VM, and my VM size is a standard B2MS. So within that guest OS, I now have great insight into the Azure Resource Manager configurations, and maybe I would make some decisions about that. Maybe I'm running some process internally that gathers maybe certain types of performance metrics, and I, I want to store that with information about the VM. I can very easily do that with this. Now, I mentioned user data, and this is actually a fairly new thing, and it's actually why I'm using the January 2021 API version up here. There's different API versions, so I'm using the latest one because that API version exposes this user data thing. And if you look at it, you can see at the bottom there, the user data is well, that's pretty ugly. What exactly am I supposed to do with that user data? Well, the whole point of this is it's um, 60 encoded. I can just decode that. So what I can do is I can take that from a base64 encoded, and if I execute this command, I can see it's hello test one. So that's taking that base64 encoded value and essentially getting a string from the characters and then decoding that. Now I can set that. Now as part of a VM creation, I can absolutely set that value. So if I jump over actually to a different window here, what I'm actually gonna do is show you how I can change that. Now, what I have right here is if I want to write and update the value of that VM, today user data is not part of any PowerShell or portal or CLI. I have to do the REST API. So when I use the REST API, what I'm essentially doing is all of the Azure Resource Manager is fundamentally RESTful. Now the PowerShell, the CLI, the portal talks through that RESTful endpoint. But the functionality comes in the REST first. Now what I want to do is just update this particular attribute of the VM. So I need to do basically a patch. A patch says, hey, I just wanna update this particular attribute or set of attributes on there. So what I created was a PowerShell script that just uses a REST call that does a patch. So I'm gonna change that user data from what it currently is to some custom message so we could see how we could actually leverage that. So if we jump back over, now to make that RESTful call, I need an access token. Now the good news is I can easily just go and get an access token as we can see I'm doing right here using my current context. So I'm gonna go and get a token, and then I'm actually gonna create an authentication header just using that access token as the bearer token that I just created. Um, I need my subscription, so I have to create the resource ID of the object I'm gonna update. So this is my demo VM, and rather than putting my subscription ID actually here as a hard-coded string, I'm using the secret store and secret management that I talked about in a previous video. But essentially, if we actually look at what that creates, resource, oh, I misspelled that, there we go, resource ID, we can see it replaced it with my subscription ID. So I have the full resource ID of the object. Now I need to pick what is the data I actually want to put into that user data. Uh, you are a VM in Azure. So that's my string, great. This is now gonna convert that to base64. So it's taking that user data text that I just set, and it's now gonna convert it to a user data in base64. Now if we look at that, 
it's really not that friendly for your eye. So what I'm now going to do is create a body. Now I'm using a hair string. So a hair string is a PowerShell construct that basically says, look, ignore any quotes or anything you see in the following lines. It saves me having to escape out these double quotes. And I'm only setting the user data property to that 64 encoded value. So I'm going to create a body. And if we look at that body, we'll see it has put my user data in there. And then all I'm going to do is invoke web request. And my method is going to be patch. And I'm going to pass it the body that I just generated. And once again, I'm using in this case, the March version of the API to actually manipulate that user data. So if I run that, command. So that's completed. If I now jump back over to the virtual machine, now we'll have to go and get the data again. So we'll scroll up and let's get the response. There it is. So now once again, I'll have to go and look. So there's my user data and then we'll decode it. You are a VM in Azure. So you can see how I'm making kind of a, a patch into the properties and I can just go and get it from the virtual machine. Now, if you were actually just directly deploying this with an ARM template, there is a sample. You can go and look at the Azure deploy file and you'll see what it actually has is user data. Let's keep scrolling down. It's part of the compute in the VM. And I always have trouble seeing it because I think my eyes are just, there we go, user data. So there we see, and it's just saying, hey, base 64, whatever that user data you set, so it's gonna do that kind of encoding for you. So that's how I could actually just set it through a template. So I can do that as well. Final thing about the metadata is I mentioned kind of scheduled events. So I can go and find out, well, are there scheduled events happening? And I notice this time I'm doing these scheduled events endpoint of the metadata. So if I execute this, it typically takes a little bit longer, but I ran this just a minute ago, so I guess it's already done some of the checks. Now we can see I have no scheduled events, but it would show me those. I'd be actually be able to go and query the array of events it passed me back. I could see if there's maintenance uh, coming for this VM. I've also got a sample I put in the file just so you could see if this was part of, for example, a virtual machine scale set and it was being terminated because of a scale in, you'd be able to see, hey, this event state is scheduled, terminate, virtual machine, the resource, and when that's gonna happen, i.e. not before. So here I can actually go and find out from within the VM hey, am I going to be scaled in? Maybe I do a check every couple of minutes. And if I see it happening, I do some clean kind of close out and then I can shut down. And then I just included kind of a Linux. You can use Coal to go and talk to that metadata endpoint. But the key point is it's just a RESTful endpoint. Yes, I'm showing it from within PowerShell, but it could be anything. I can call these RESTful from a C Sharp program from Python, Anything you can think of it is just a RESTful interface. So I don't have to use a script. It could be a program I'm writing, but it's a way that I can go and find out information about all of the ARM knowledge about my resource that actually is the VM and also scheduled events. So it's just a great way from within the guest OS to find out information about that surrounding environment. And that's it. That's the Azure Instance Metadata Service. The code I used is on my Random Stuff GitHub. It's linked in the description. So if you want to try those commands out, um, go for it. And that's it. So I hope that was useful and interesting. Until next time, take care.